Bizarre I don't work here situation plus being way too high equals extreme confusion posted by Blackfire Phoenix. So this happened Sunday before last. My husband Corey and I were invited by one of our best friends, April, on a trip to the city where she had attended college. It's still in our state, but it's about a two hour drive from the rural wasteland where we live. Specifically, April set up the trip so she could introduce my husband to a friend that she'd made at her job while living there. I had met Brent, not his real name, once before, and seeing how much Corey and Brent had in common, I had immediately agreed with her that the two of them would become instant friends if introduced. Sure enough, when we arrived on Saturday and we met up with Brent, the two guys hit it off famously and we had a great time. We checked into our hotel later and the four of us ended up staying up way too late that night playing video games and watching stuff. This is relevant because even with our late checkout, the next morning we overslept and ended up having to rush in order to check out on time. Due to the rush, I ended up just keeping the oversized shirt I'd worn to bed on and changed into my swim trunks. I'm a woman, but I typically prefer trunks over bikinis. Since I hadn't worn them the day before, the hotel pool had sadly been closed, and we were headed for a nature trail and then home anyway. Plus, they were the only shorts that I had packed and the best option in the 90 degree weather. With our plans, there was no reason for me to really care about my appearance. Keep in mind for later that my trunks were a bright blue and my big comfy shirt had characters from an anime on it. I knew I looked like a hobo who'd wandered into this quite fancy hotel lobby as we checked out. Still, I didn't care because we were leaving. Or so I thought. We said goodbye to Brent who had to head to work and I assumed we were heading out as well. Turns out that in the chaos of packing and getting our crap out on time, April hadn't been able to finish her breakfast and this hotel lobby had a second story just for lounging guests. April plopped down in a comfy chair and pulled out her food, and Corey and I awkwardly sat on the couch next to her, feeling like we shouldn't be there after checkout, though I'd seen people at other hotels do this in the past. Now, before I continue, I need to describe the unique layout of this hotel. It's built on the slope of a large hill. The main lobby led out to the main parking lot at the bottom of the slope. The second floor lobby, which basically looked like a giant version of my grandma's living room, was level with the top of the hill, and it had another parking lot for the guest on the second floor. Still, to be able to get into the second story lobby, you would need a key card for your room, but apparently one of those doors was broken, which is also important to the encounter I would soon have. So, after April finished eating, both her and my husband head down to the main lobby to use the restrooms. This left me alone in this massive lounge because no employees were stationed on the second floor. Now's a good time to mention that I was out of my mind high on a couple of Delta 8 edibles. It was a complete accident on my part, I swear, and I had woken up at around 7am in a lot of pain. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, so I had groggily gotten myself an edible to help ease me off and get back to sleep for a little longer. Well, again, due to the rushing when we all got up three hours later, I forgot that I already had an edible since I didn't feel anything from the first gummy. I assumed that since I fell back asleep before it fully kicked in that my metabolism slowed down and the high was lying in wait for the worst possible timing. So deciding that I want to feel a relaxing but coherent high on the nature trail, I popped another gummy. Ah, the high didn't kick in until right before they headed to the restrooms, but evidently both edibles kicked in at once. I was on another plane of existence. And now, I finally arrive at the I don't work here encounter. I had started wandering around while waiting for April and Corey to return, and I found myself in front of a lectern podium, which had the schedule for the photography convention that we had briefly seen being held there the previous day. I'm extremely into photography, so I stood there reading the entire schedule to see what fun activities they had to do at the con. My back was facing the doors that only guests are supposed to have access to, and it was dead silent. Then suddenly two loud bangs scared the living heck out of my insanely high brain, and I jumped around to see an older yet surprisingly fit looking man, probably in his 50s, yanking on the handle for each of the locked doors. There were four doors in total. No one had come through this second story lobby since we'd been there either, so his sudden appearance unnerved my toasted brain even more. I had instinctually started to step towards the door to help him in, but I paused as I realized that he probably wasn't a guest if he was just aggressively yanking on the locked doors. I watched as this man cursed at each door while pulling the handles multiple times, unsure of what to do and still scared because I was way too high to be dealing with someone I didn't know by myself. The man went to yank the final door handle as violently as he had the other three, only for it to open unexpectedly, and it almost hit him in the face from the force of the pull. I was now panicking because this man was obviously very agitated and I was still the only person in the room that he had possibly just broken the door of to get into. 
I did the only thing I could think of to avoid him, and I turned back to the podium, this time only pretending to read the convention schedule. Irrational fear that he might be a killer also crossed my mind, so I just kept thinking, please walk past me, go downstairs and check in like a normal person, ignore me, please! It felt like an eternity passed, and I hadn't even heard him coming up behind me, so when his loud, ahem, <clears throat> broke the silence, I jumped yet again and spun around. This guy was maybe four feet away from me, possibly closer, and he was close enough that I could smell his sweat. Ugh. His expression was disconcerting as heck, and he stared wide-eyed at me. He looked confused, angry, excited, and basically just insane. All at once, I had no idea what he was expecting me to do. Is he mad I didn't open the door for him? I thought to myself. When I said nothing, that's when crap got weird. He started to kind of blubber at me loudly while looking me up and down. Nothing coming from his mouth could be comprehended as words. The only thing that I was able to pick up on was that he sounded really embarrassed or confused. He wasn't speaking another language. I'm almost positive of that. I just can't do it justice in writing, but it sounded like a string of ta-ta sounds that you'd hear in a comedy sketch making fun of really fancy rich British men. You know, like holding wine glasses and chortling with one another in a deep babbling way. Several seconds passed with him making these deep blubbering sounds and he pointed at me and then the podium and then the hallway to the hotel rooms. My brain finally rebooted and started processing enough to squeak out the words. Oh, um, I don't work. The man cut me off with one curt, extra loud babble, and I shrunk back a little as he stared at me silently for a couple of seconds after. I'm convinced at this point that he may have had a mental disability of some sort and isn't able to speak clearly or he's possibly having tics. I wanted to help him, but he was absolutely terrifying me. I wanted to tell him that he just needs to head down the stairs to the main lobby, but his stare felt like it was literally penetrating my soul. I despise being that high, especially in public, and this was sending me spiraling. Then, he suddenly says, very, very quietly, Oh, uh, okay, so, um... Uh... His sudden, complete change in tone and pitch, and the fact that he just spoke so clearly, made me question reality in that moment. I stood there, still not knowing what else to say, so I end up repeating, uh, Sorry, I don't work here, while gesturing to the stairs. This causes him to quickly move towards the glass doors that separate the top of the stairs and the lobby, and his face is burning dark crimson. I can't tell if he's angry or embarrassed or what, so I just wait for him to either go through the doors down to the main lobby or say something else. In a very clear voice, but said very quickly with what I could now tell was obvious embarrassment, he repeats, you don't work here. He stated it. There was no question in his voice, then continued. I go down here, uh, check in down there, I nod. Without another word, he furiously jerks the stairwell door open, just like he had with the guest entrance door, and practically ran down the stairs. All I could do was stand there, looking down at the main lobby desk, thinking over and over again, what the heck just happened? I see him approach the desk in record time, and I just continue to watch him in a confused daze, until I assume an employee who I couldn't see from my angle greeted him. I could see his mouth moving and then he turned to the stairwell pointing up. We made eye contact for a split second before I snapped out of it and quickly shuffled back to the sofa where all of our bags were. About a minute passes and I'm silently begging for Corey and April to get back soon. It felt like an hour had passed since they had gone down to the bathrooms, but I checked my phone and saw that the whole encounter with the bizarre man had only lasted about five minutes. Another minute passes and suddenly the stairwell door opens. I look up, hoping to see my husband or best friend, but instead I lock eyes again with none other than the blubbering man. He holds my stare for just a moment with a hard glare, face still red, then turns his head away from me and swiftly walks back out of the door he somehow got into from outside. Of course, like the stone dummy I clearly was at the time, I ended up watching him leave without realizing I was doing it. He glanced back one more time while passing through the doorway, saw me staring like a complete idiot, but instead of glaring now, he just looks embarrassed again. He mutters, sorry, so quietly that I'm still wondering if I imagined it or not, then practically ran out to his car. Only seconds after this guy leaves, Corey and April get back upstairs laughing about something un until they see my face. Corey immediately asks me what's wrong and I do my best to explain that I had the weirdest I don't work here situation happen while they were gone, but most of what I'm describing makes no sense to them either. Even now, I have no clue what was going on with that guy exactly. 
<laughs> Dude, if you see my post, I'm sorry if in my blazed and confused state of mind, I embarrassed you. But, but really, man, I have no idea how you even began to think I worked there, considering how trashy I looked that day. My best guess is that this man was having a very bad or stressful day and or has really bad social anxiety, which I completely empathize with. I want to add that if he does have a mental disability, I'm not shaming or making fun of him in any way. He wasn't exactly rude or anything, aside from the glaring. It was just incredibly unsettling and bizarre as heck, especially due to how high I was. I hope he's well, unless he really is some type of criminal, that is. Do you think OP was overreacting? Comment below and let me know and we'll talk about it. I don't work here, lady. Strip Club Edition, posted by Nemanev. This takes us back to the early 2000s. I was 19 at the time. My second job ever was at a shady accountant's office. I worked a couple years as a courier and then was promoted to a small administrative role. It was a small office, but we handled a lot of work because we had a lot of clients. Our biggest was a chain store, big store, with headquarters overseas. We did the numbers for the local branches. This meant that Big Store would send a couple of times per year a representative that will stay a couple of days in a hotel, so we'd have to show them a nice time in town. One of these representatives, VIP, was a bit of a creep and demanded to go to nightclubs where we had to make sure he didn't get in trouble. Our country was always in the middle of an economic crisis, so the accountant would make us go above and beyond to keep the representatives happy and, in the case of this guy, drunk. During one of the VIP's visits, he heard of a strip club and wanted to go there at all cost. One of my coworkers took him there and VIP liked it so much that he practically never left the establishment. I don't know why, but he decided this would be the place of operations next time he'd come. And he managed to make sure a next visit would ensue as soon as possible. So a couple months later he came, with short notice, and arranged with accountant to have their meetings at the strip club. Mind you, this was still during working hours. Sorry for the long background. Now to the I don't work here lady part. This went down during a meeting at said strip club at noon. The cast is me, VIP, accountant, accountant's personal assistant, drunk patrons one, two, and three, and bouncer. We were sitting in one of the corner tables away from most of the action. It was actually a pretty quiet place, all things considered, and given the nature of the talk, ill accounting practices, it surprisingly seemed like a good place. There were a few patrons next to the stage and there was little action. But there were dancers coming and going. It seemed like the place never closed. Accountant's personal assistant was a girl in her mid-twenties. She was the accountant's niece and she was both incredibly smart and beautiful. She was sitting next to her uncle, taking notes and providing data on demand. I was there just to make sure VIP always had a drink in hand. At some point, I was handed some documents to check something out and the assistant went to the bar to get more drinks. So the three males were sitting at our table, VIP and accountant talking figures as I was checking the papers when suddenly we heard a loud crash and some yelling. We turned to see the assistant arguing with drunk patron one, her white shirt all wet. She then threw a punch at patron one's face who was rocked back by the vicious hit and the surprise. Two and three, who were nearby, jumped in and tried to grab the assistant. We sprang from our seats and rushed to her aid. There was some pushing and pulling, and the accountant was trying to hold the assistant back and shield her, but she was enraged. VIP and I were pushing the drunk patrons back. Fortunately, the fighting was contained between the assistant and patron one, and a full-blown skirmish didn't break out. A couple of seconds later, a massive six-foot-eight bouncer appeared, grabbed patron one, and started bellowing out orders. We instantly stopped as if we were toddlers under the command of a kindergarten teacher. Upon questioning, patron one said that the expletive refused to serve him a drink in a lap dance, pointing at the assistant. Still enraged, she started shouting and things almost escalate again, weren't it for the bouncer being so menacingly in control. The man was good at his job. Eventually, assistant calmed down and said that she was returning from the bar with a tray with drinks when patron one slapped her in the butt and told her to take him to a private booth. She said she didn't work there. He slurred something about being quick about it, and when she tried to leave, he tried to grab for her chest and knock the tray with drinks all over her suit and shirt. She told her something along the lines of, I told you I don't work here, a-hole. And he replied, well, you look like a garden utensil that works here. She lost it and started swinging. In the aftermath, patron one was kicked out. Two and three left with his friend. VIP paid the bartender some money to allow us to stay there. I took the assistant in a cab back to her home. Assistant was still fuming and ranted on how she hated working for her uncle and his shady clients. She wanted to quit and start working in her field. She was an architect, but our economy was so depressed that there was hardly any work there. She took a week off work after that, and during that week, I decided to quit. I was a high school dropout, and I thought it was a good time to get graduated. 
so I haven't seen her since. I learned that accountant was caught stealing from big client a couple years later, and his business declined heavily after losing a majority of his business. A couple years ago, I've seen assistant running a somewhat successful Instagram account giving interior design tips and offering her services as an architect and designer. She seems to be doing okay. The strip club closed a long time ago, so I guess the drunk patrons are getting their fill elsewhere. You gotta be careful if you're an uncle taking your niece to a bar. These guys' actions were way out of line. Do you think so? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to comment the secret phrase, egg, because it's incredible and edible. Just like the first story's tablet was. Check out another video here. See you there.